Hello, welcome to Guessing the Specialist Exam Part 8. This is the last in the series, and you must already know that I didn't write this exam, my friends here did. You know what you could do? You could go to this website, you could find the little contact us page, you could send them an email and tell them how much you've enjoyed these questions. Or maybe you didn't, I don't know, but you should check them out. Anyway, let's do the first question. Boop. Okay, uh, have a read of it, have a try, see how you go. Okay, so my friends insisted that we put this question on here because they pop up every year. There's some sort of matrix equation. So have a look at it, see how you go. All right, so the way that I approach these is to rewrite in terms of like A's, B's, and C's, right? So we have A multiplied by X plus B equals C multiplied by X, right? I'm just calling all, of our, all the matrices A, B, and C. Okay. And now we rearrange this pretty much like we would any other algebraic equation. So all the x's, let's get them onto one side together. So we'll have ax minus cx, and then this positive b, I'm going to move it over here as negative b. Okay, now this is where it gets a little tricky, right? Because normally with normal algebra, you would see, okay, I've got a common factor of x, so I'll bring that out the front. But with matrix algebra, order matters, right? So this common factor of x, look how the common factor of x is on the right-hand side of both of those. That means the common factor of x will also have to be on the right-hand side of our bracket. So it's going to have to be a minus c x, like that. And this negative b is still there. Okay. Now, we can't divide by a matrix, but if we want to like undo a matrix, we use an inverse, right? So we can now say that X is equal to the inverse of A minus C multiplied by negative B. Okay, um, easy, straightforward, or at least kind of. Now what we need to do is just type this into our calculator. Doing this by hand would take us just way too long. All right, so here I am with my calculator. There's different ways to do this. Some people like to go in here and like enter the matrices A, B, and C. I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to go math and this one here. And then I'm going to write in exactly what I've got here. So I've got bracket followed by the matrix A. So put a two by two matrix in there. Minus another two by two matrix. Close the bracket to the power of negative one minus, oh, sorry, multiplied by, put in another matrix, but make it negative, and then close our bracket at the end. All right, now that I've got that structure, I can just enter my numbers in there. Being very careful that you're entering the A numbers in for A, the C numbers in for C, and the B numbers in for B. Okay, I have my answer, and it looks like it's going to match one of these answers here. So our answer is B. Now, before I celebrate, some of us may not be at all comfortable with this kind of algebra. That's fine. It just means that it's going to take you longer, because what you can do is sub in all four of these answers into your equation to... Um, just see which one works, right? So what I might do is do a double check of this by subbing this into the left-hand side of my equation, subbing this into the right-hand side of my equation, and making sure that they come up with the same answer. So I typed it into the calculator. I typed the left-hand side in, and I got this answer right here. So if I type the right-hand side in, I should get the same answer. And yes, I do. Great, fantastic, feeling very confident now. Let's celebrate and move on to our short responses. So we've asked for circular motion, we've asked for projectile motion, here we have it. Uh, have a try, see how you go. All right, so let's think about what's happening first of all. Uh, there is a child here and they're swinging a balloon around. Like that. And then the string snaps which means that the thing starts, like flies off and starts falling towards the ground and hits the ground, dead the ground. Okay, so that's the idea. So we've got circular motion followed by projectile motion. There is what I would consider a famous question from the 2020 external, harder than this question, much, much harder. The 
did the same kind of thing. Okay, uh, so we need to deal with the circular motion first. Don't even think about projectile motion until we figured out the speed at which the initial velocity, the speed at which this thing is going when the rope snaps. So a helpful formula for us here is right here. So this says the period is equal to 2 pi over omega, where omega is the angular velocity, the rate at which the angle is changing. Okay, so that means the period, period. Okay, it says a full rotation in a third of a second. So that's what the period is, how long it takes to do a full rotation. So one third of a second, 2 pi on angular velocity. So now we can calculate the angular velocity uh, to be 2 pi divided by a third, 6 pi. Okay, what does uh, angular velocity mean? Okay, uh, I don't want to go into this too far because if you're watching this question, hopefully you've got some ideas. But angular velocity means how much the angle is changing per second. So this, the units for this is radians per second. And so that means that this is the angle that it's changing at. It's doing 6 pi radians. It's doing 3 rotations per second. That's what this angular velocity means. Let's stay with this picture for a little while because we actually know a little bit about this circle. We know that it has a oh, radius of 2 meters, right? Because the string is 2 meters. So radius, 2 meters. You should also know the definition of a radian. A radian is a length around the circle that is the same length as the radius. So that's one radian. So if we're saying that it travels at 6 pi radians per second, we can also find out the speed at which it's moving around this circle. So the speed that it's moving around the circle is just going to be equal to the angular velocity times the radius. Right? So that's going to be 12 pi and then we're measuring speed in meters per second. This speed is super important because the moment that this string snaps, the speed is going to be that. The speed, its initial speed when, it, when the rope snaps is 12 pi meters per second. Okay, the moment the rope snaps, we can get rid of circular motion, forget about circular motion, that's not happening anymore, it becomes a projectile. So, forgetting the fact that this was was being rotated, it, it, forget the rotation now, it just gets launched from the child at an initial velocity of 12 pi meters per second, and then gravity acts upon it, and then it hits the ground. So we've got this projectile with a zero degree launch angle. All right, so let's start dealing with the projectile calculation slash equation. So the acceleration of our object with respect to time. Now there's only one acceleration force acting on this, and this is gravity pulling it down to Earth. So negative g j. Now a quick shout out to Miss Twyman who checked my solutions to this, or wrote some solutions to this, and she wanted to make clear that hey, this only works if we ignore the fact that this is a big wibbly-wobbly balloon, right? We're ignoring any kind of air resistance. Hopefully that makes the physics -y teachers among us happy. It, we're sort of simplifying this down. No air resistance. Okay, uh, now what about velocity? Velocity is going to be equal to the integral of what our acceleration was. Straightforward. Now, the integral of g is negative gt, or the integral of negative g is negative gt, and then we've got this, our c value. Now, when we're integrating vectors, we're integrating our i's and our j components. So we're going to have uh, a constant for the i's and a constant for the j's. So the question is, when t is equal to 0, well, the question, the information we have is that when t is equal to 0, the speed of our object is equal to 12 pi meters per second. The speed, the speed, the speed in what direction? The speed purely in the i direction. There is no initial speed up. There is no initial speed down. The initial speed is like that way. So we can say that v0 equals 12 pi i, right? And 12 pi i is equal to this equation here when t is equal to 0. 
So negative g t zero j. All right, so that's just going to be zero. Uh, actually, let's write it in there just so we're very clear. Plus c one i plus c two j. So taking this and sort of simplifying that now, we get something like twelve pi i equals zero j plus c one i plus c two j. And therefore, right, twelve pi i c one i. That means that c one equals twelve pi. And it means that C2, well, there's no J on this side, so C2 must be equal to zero. All right, so now we have a final velocity equation. Okay, so we have an acceleration function, we have a velocity function. Now, we want to know the velocity, so we want to know this, but we want to know it when it hits the ground, right? And so knowing when it hits the ground that's a displacement idea, right? If we know when it's displacement, when it's on the ground. So in order for us to know when it's somewhere, we need to have a displacement function. So we're gonna to have to integrate this again. All right, so we're integrating this now. Uh, now the integral of that is gonna be 12 pi t i minus g t squared on two plus c one i plus c two j. I guess it goes without saying that this c one and this c two are different to that c one and that c two. It's your working. You could write c three and c four here to avoid any confusion. Um, this kind of thing you should have practiced it by now. It shouldn't be a surprise to you that we're getting to this negative g t squared on two situation. Now we're going to have to do a similar kind of thing here, where we find this c one and this c two. Now, importantly. Well, what do we know or what can we assume, et cetera, et cetera, about the height and the displacement, right? So we've got this person sitting here, like this, swinging this ball, this ball around the string, right? Now we're told the person is 1.4 meters high. I had a bunch of, when I asked maths teachers about this question, you know, they were saying, well, are they swinging it like this? Are they swinging it like this? Look, let's just, let's go simple here. Let's assume that the ball is the same height as the person, so 1.4 high. Uh, and then it's going to be, I think, easy for me if I make the origin here at the person's foot, right? And if I make the like the the place where it launches from kind of in line with the person kind of thing, um, which means that its initial position is 1.4 meters high and zero meters across. So that means its displacement at time zero is just equal to 1.4 j. All right, and that's gonna be equal to, right, subbing in zero into this big long equation here. So 12 pi zero minus g zero squared over two plus c one i plus c two j. Uh, I think I forgot a j there. Okay, uh, there. All right, so that means, like, when we've done all of our calculations here, this means that that's zero, that's zero. Um, this C1i, there's no C1i there. So it means that there's only one, like, piece of this puzzle, and that's that C2j is equal to 1.4j. All of that done, I can now write a displacement function. All right, we love this. We've got a displacement function now. Why do we need a displacement function? Because we need to know when will this thing hit the ground. And when is it going to hit the ground? When this j component is equal to zero. So I'm going to find when the j component is equal to zero. So solving the equation zero equals negative g t squared on two plus one point four. Now, is this tech active? So like, don't, don't get crazy here. Just type it into your calculator. So my calculator spits me out some nice answers. Negative root 14 on seven and positive root 14 on seven. Obviously we're rejecting the negative because this is a time that this person has released it. So the time that this hits the ground, T is equal to root 14 on seven. 
Okay, that's great. We've got a time. We just need to now know the um, speed at which it hits the ground. Now, this speed at which it hits the ground, we don't actually have an equation for that at the moment. We have a the closest thing we have is a velocity function. And if you sub in t into here, that will give you a velocity in the i direction and a velocity in the j direction. Actually, let's let's just do that. Let's find the velocity in the i direction, the velocity in the j direction, because I want to talk about it. There's kind of a speedier way to do it. Okay, so the velocity at time root 14 on 7 is going to be equal to 12 pi i, which is like some number, and negative g 9.8 times root 14 on 7, some number. So in the i direction, the velocity is 12 pi, right? In the uh, j direction, the velocity is g root 14 on 7. Hello, Joel from the future here. It's right about this moment that my computer decided to crash and everything went haywire. But that is our final answer. I found the magnitude of the velocity, square, square, square root, 38.06. Now, speaking to my fellow maths teachers, 38.06 meters per second is so fast. If you convert that to like kilometers per hour, it's like 130 kilometers per hour. Um, water balloons probably don't move at that speed, but hey, whatever. That's my final answer. Um, I, I think it's worth a celebration, particularly because it's the second time I've celebrated this. Boom! And we're going to do the last question. There's a sneak preview. So before we jump into this last question, I want to make clear that these videos, we're not actually trying to accurately predict the external exam. We can't do that. What we're trying to do is help you prepare for them. And so across the last set, six, seven videos, I've been getting comments, I've been getting emails saying, can you please do more projectile motion? We want to learn about projectile motion. So the last question was projectile motion, but you want it. So I said, hey, let's do one more. I called my friend. And I said, can you write me a projectile motion question? And what she came up with is like, awesome. Here we are. This is the question. Now, obviously, it's not written out like an external exam question would be, but I love it. It's fun. All right, we've got uh, a snow slope. This is me on my skis. I'm going to take off. I'm going to hit this maximum height here. I'm going to come down onto this 45 degree slope. Now, um, Kavindi explained to me that if my skis angle is, is like that, like more than the slope, I'm going to crash. If my skis angles angle is less than the slope, like, like this, I'm going to be okay. Not equal to, but just less than. So that's the question. Let's find out, do I crash or do I sail away to victory? Now, because we did a bunch of projectile motion in the last one, I'm going to skip through some steps a little quicker. Um, acceleration of this person. So acceleration is equal to negative gj. Now, what about velocity? Well, velocity is going to be the integral of that. Now, the velocity is going to be negative gtj, but it's also going to be whatever the initial velocity is. And we've got some information here. I'm moving at 27 meters per second off the ramp. And the ramp is making an, that angle is 36 degrees, right? That angle there is, this is me taking off. That angle there is 36 degrees. Now, if I do like a little bit of a drawing here, I can find that angle there. It's 54 degrees. Right, so my initial velocity is going to be equal to 27 cos in the uh, cos the angle 54 in the i direction and 27 sine 54 in the j direction but not just 27 sine 54 also that bit here negative g t all of that in the j direction all of that in the i direction so initial velocity we're finding our um I component and our J component using that angle and that initial speed. Now it's probably going to make my life easier if I just use decimal approximations for those. Okay, displacement function is just going to be the integral of that. Alright, so obviously I've integrated here, right, and I've sort of skipped over the C bits here with the velocity because I've just found the initial velocity. Um, what about the, like, the plus C here? What about the initial displacement? I think I can just make my life easier if I make the origin there. That If I make that my takeoff point, which means that if I sub t0, t0, my initial position I know is 0, 0, 
I actually don't need any. Now, very often with these questions, like you've just got to start doing things, right? So I've just done this, not really with any goals in mind, just to sort of start thinking about what's going on. Uh, there's things that I don't know. I don't know. I don't know this height, right? Um, so I don't know how to come at that directly, right? But I do see this like um, maximum height that I reach. Like I meet, reach a maximum height of 50. So let's find out like when do I reach that maximum height? Just it might be useful to know like where, etc. Know stuff about that maximum height. So when do we reach maximum height? We reach max height when the velocity of the J component is equal to zero, okay? So think about what this means. This is the velocity in the I direction, so the velocity across, and this is the velocity up or the velocity down. When you're at max height, you've got no velocity up, you've got no velocity down. Your velocity in this direction is equal to zero. So in other words, if we let this equals zero, we'll know the time at which we're at that maximum height. So I reach a maximum height at 2.228928. That's when I'm at that maximum height. Now let's think about what that actually is, right? So here's my like origin. That's my maximum height. But my displacement function here is talking about maximum height from there to there. Right? So it's going to give me that height, that much, that much height. Let's call that much height Q, right? So what, which one of my equations here, what portion of my equations here gives me this value Q? Well, it's the J component of the displacement function. So at time 2.289, etc., this here will be my value of Q, my height. So subbing that time into this portion of it, gives me this Q height of 24.3438, blah, 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 blah. What does that give me? Well, it also gives me this height here, right? Not a very good drawing, from there to there. Because I know that the maximum height there is 50, that's 24.34, so this is going to be 25 point something something. All right, so we've got a height 25.65619. Okay, hmm, so what's, what have we got? We've got this, this person going falling down, 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 and intersecting with this thing here. Okay, so I've got a function intersecting with another function. I wonder, wonder if we can go Cartesian with this. If, if I create a Cartesian equation for the this thing and a Cartesian equation for this thing, I can probably find where these two things meet. So to create a Cartesian equation of my projectile, I take my displacement function and say x equals that, like that, and say y equals that. Now they're both equations in terms of t. I forgot the t earlier. Uh, now, if I rearrange the top one and make it t equals x over 15 point, I can sub x over 15 into there and into there. All right, I love it. I think that's a equation that I could just type into my calculator and I should get a projectile that looks like that. Let's double check that. So I've typed it in, let's draw it. All right, uh, now what are we expecting to see? We're expecting to see, this is my origin right here. We're expecting to see that we'll go up to a height of Q, right? Because my Cartesian plane is actually like that, right? That's how I created it with an origin there. So let's just check that that's true, max, uh, 24.34, 24.3438. Okay, so that feels like we're in business. Um, now, the other thing that we're doing is landing on, on that line there. So let's think a little bit about that line. So I've just moved it over here a little bit just to like talk about it. There, there's me, looking good. Um, what did we say? We said that Q was that, but we said that this height here is like uh, 25.65 something. And we said that, and we know that this length here is 45, right? And we also now know what this point is right here, because that point, this is the origin, so that point must be 45 across, 
and negative 25.65 down. All right, so we have a point on this line and we also know that it's making like a 45 degree angle. So it has a gradient of negative one. So that's like grade nine maths stuff. So if we have a point and if we have a gradient of negative one, we should be able to find the equation of this straight line. All right, straight line, y equals mx plus c, a y value of negative 25, an x value of 45, a gradient of negative one, find the c value, y equals negative x plus 19.34381, that is the equation of our landing slope. So let's just draw that on our calculator. I love it. Uh, we can see an intersection point, right? Right there, right there, right there. So let's just do a little G-solve and see if we can find an intersection point. Now, they've got an intersection point there somewhere. Um, now, that intersection point is like if that line was extended up, there would be like an intersection point where you'd run into it. But that's not, that's not it. So we reject that intersection point and get the next one. Here it is. Okay, 113.37 in the x direction and 94.034 in the y direction. Down, negative. All right, so intersection point there. Take a minute to appreciate how incredibly heroic this jump is. I'm starting there and I'm going 113 meters in that direction. Um, and I'm going to land 97 meters below my takeoff point uh, and probably like 110 meters from my max height. Super impressive leap. Okay, um, now, if it's intersecting at that point, uh, I really want to know what will my uh, velocity be at that point. Like, Because I need to know the angle that I'm at, and we, when it comes to angles, we need velocities, right? But my velocity function is in terms of time, so I need to know what the time is when that happens. Now, this is displacement. So, if I sub 113.378 into my displacement function for i, I can use that information to find out the time at which this is happening. Okay, I've done that, and I have the truly epic time of 7.144 seconds. I've been airborne for 7.144 seconds before I land. Now, what do I want to know? I want to know my landing angle, right? And when it comes to launch angles or landing angles, you should be thinking about velocity. If we know the velocity in this direction, which is the I component, and if we know the velocity in the J component, right, we can find the angle here using tan theta, equals opposite over adjacent, the J component over the I component. So there it is, tan theta is equal to, this is the J component over the I component. Now you can just do inverse tan, etc., etc. Um, but we get a theta of negative 71.764 degrees. Okay, um, now my voice dropped there a little bit and you can hopefully understand why. Um, remember what, what we're doing here. We're trying to figure out, do, like, do I, do I have an epic landing or, or do I crash? Um, now, the angle of the landing thing is negative 45 degrees, right? For, negative 45. My, these are my skis. My skis are going to be making an angle of negative 71.765. Uh, my skis are going to land like down here somewhere and go bonk straight into the snow. Um, this is the answer. I'm finished. Um, that angle is is steeper than that angle, therefore crash. All right. Now, there are probably better ways to solve this, different ways to solve this, other ways to solve this. Um, people might solve this without going to Cartesian equations. They might use different methods. This is the, the method... Uh, I like this method. I like this method because you get to play with little bits of it. You get to move to Cartesian equation, come back. Um, in the comments, if you've got a different thing, if you can find a way to upload and show us your solution to it, show us your solution. Uh, feels a little strange to celebrate this one because it ends in my demise, but I'm happy to do it. All right, let's celebrate. That's it. All right, that is it. That is the end of guessing the specialist exam final part. Um, thank you as always to my peeps here. Uh, I want to do a personal thank you to 
this one in particular, Kavindi, you have been an absolute star throughout this entire process. I really appreciate all the work you've done. I think uh, all the students in Queensland are going to be like 20% smarter thanks to these. So thank you so much. Um, you should check out the website. If you've enjoyed this, go and find their like contact and just email them and say like thumbs up or whatever it is that the cool kids say these days. That is it. Signing out. Good luck. Only a few days left, but still plenty of time to study, study, study. Catch up.